1 Corinthians 2.14 But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. And unfortunately, that's about half the church. They're operating as carnal Christians, as natural people. And if you try to give spiritual insight to your average, I gave my life to Jesus Christian that dons the doors of a church once every other month. Usually what you say to them, you, they got that dazed look like, huh? And their foolishness to him. Neither can they know them. Neither can he know them. Why? Because they are spiritually discerned. And we're going to talk about it this morning. Father, thank you for your awesome word. Thank you that you never leave us comfortless. You sent Holy Spirit, the author of this book, to reside inside of us, to teach us if we would allow ourselves to be taught. You have given us teachers to sit under if we would heed what they say. And as Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. We thank you, Father, for giving us apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the equipping of your saints for the work of the ministry. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God in here today. I am starting kind of where I ended last week, but the material is just too good. I've got to go back, and we're going to hammer this in. So look at your neighbor and say, reinforcement. reinforcement. Hallelujah. Spiritual truths can only be perceived by a person's spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, spirit. spirit. God gave us a mind. And we are to develop our mind, but we're not to lean on our understanding. And spiritual truths can only be perceived by your spirit. That's why if you're sitting in church and it's like, I'd rather be somewhere else, you're not in the spirit. So things are going to go right over your head in one ear and out the other. And listen, it's beyond, it's beyond just, I just don't want, I'm just not interested. And the, the pastor sounds like, wah, 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 wah. It goes beyond that. It goes to even if you tune in for a second, you're not going to get anything. Because things of the spirit are, spirit are perceived by a person's spirit. Look at your neighbor and said, your head, not your, your heart, not your head. Therefore, since spiritual truths can only be perceived by a person's spirit, it is impossible for those who are walking in the vanity of their minds, and for those taking notes, that's Ephesians 4, 7. Ephesians 4, 7 talks about walking in the vanity of your mind. It's impossible to ever understand the things of God. That's why you have a church of ignorant brethren. They don't listen with their spirit. They don't receive what Holy Spirit is saying within their spirit. They're just intellectually trying to connect dots in their mind. Now, for a lot of the church also uh, uh, can't be perceived because they never get into the Word themselves. How can you understand the Word if you never read the Word? If when you come to church, the first time you ever heard the word is when you're sitting instead of at home when you're reading. Because the Holy Spirit says he will bring things to remembrance. So when the teacher is teaching the things of the spirit, your spirit receives it and now you can process it. And that information can turn into revelation because you've already read that and you've prayed over that. And now the Spirit will bring that to remembrance for you. 
See, that's how people get caught up anyways. It's like, I don't understand that. Okay, well, what part did you understand? Well, I understood verse 7. All right, well, then stay at verse 7. Instead of trying to figure out what you don't know, how about meditating on, and hey, how about this? How about doing what you do know? Well, I don't understand that. That bothers me. Just read it. And if it's in your spirit, one of these days you'll hear a message from a man or a woman of God and they'll hit it and they'll elaborate on it and you'll go, oh, yeah, that's it. He'll bring it to remembrance instead of camping and hunkering down. That's the mistake people make. You're a brand new Christian and you want, to, in other words, you're a kindergarten Christian and you want to go to this word and you want to do advanced calculus. Wait till you're in 11th and 12th grade. But they always want to go to the hard scriptures. I don't understand scriptures. No, baby. Go to the ones you do know and that you do understand. Read through until something pops out into your spirit and go, oh. Yes. Don't sit there and scratch your head and try to figure something out. That Listen, God might not want you to know that right now anyways. We've talked about that in this church. Well, why not? Because of his mercy? What do you mean because of his mercy? Because if you got understanding of it and you got revelation of a truth, now you know it, which means now God has to, because he's the righteous judge of all the earth, has to hold you accountable to it. Keeping you in the dark about it is a way of protecting you, a way of having mercy on you. Because now you know that you know that you know that you know. And if not, the enemy's going to come up and he's going to come before the throne. Like I said in Revelation, he's the accuser of the brethren. And God's like, yeah, I'm going to have to hold them accountable. They know. And how does he know that you know? Because he's the one that showed it to you. The word of God is a spiritual book. Look at your neighbor and say, he's talking about spirit again. And why is that so, like, uncommon in the church? The world don't have a problem with spiritual things. We go home and go to Netflix, and all you see is vampires and werewolves and ghosts and goblins and ghouls. And man, they whole series on ghosts. They don't have a problem with spiritual things. Why is the church silent? We're the ones that have authority in the spiritual realm. Yes. We were created from the spiritual realm and we are spirit beings. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. The Word of God is a spiritual book and it's written under the direction of the Holy Spirit. For those taking notes, 2 Timothy 3.16 tells us that. Also 2 Peter Chapter 1, verses 20 and 21. This is not just some man decided that, you know what, I think I'll write something pretty crafty. <laughs> and maybe one of these days they'll put it in a book. People were inspired by the Holy Ghost. He's the author of the book. Well this, well that. Have you ever really studied how we got this? I'm going to do it sometime on a Wednesday night. You can rely and trust on what you got. And one of the things that I'm going to move on is just prophecy in of itself. The very fact that you can have somebody to write something down and then 500 years, years later it happens just exactly the way they said it. And you see that over and over and over and over and over again of prophecy being fulfilled. It's amazing how God's word is, is batting a thousand. But people will like really leech on to this guy named Notre Dame who had a bunch of stuff. And some of it come to pass, some of it didn't. But boy, they still put him in high esteem. Well, I don't know. Notre Dame said. But yet the word of God's batting a thousand. And yet, well, I don't know about that word stuff, that Bible stuff. You can rely on it. You can lean on it. It is life and it is spirit. We're going to get into that in a second. So the word of God was not written to the head, 
but to the innermost part of the heart. People read it wrong. It was not written to your head. It was written to your heart. This is why some people find the Bible so hard to understand. It's like trying to... <laughs> It's like trying to wear shoes on your hands and walk around on your hands all day long. Can you imagine doing that? Well, bless God, let me put one crane here and there and try to lean up. And imagine somebody walking down the hallway on their hands with a pair of shoes on their hands. But that's what it's like. Because the shoes were made for feet and feet were made for walking. And the word of God was not written for your head. It was written for your heart. So if it ain't fitting, it's because you're trying to put a square peg in a round hole. You're trying to comprehend it with your head instead of letting it. And intellectual people, they can't let it go. Because, they're, they, well, they, they think a whole lot of their intellect. So they're always reading it with their head. They're not reading it with their heart, and they don't understand why they can't understand it. Well, it wasn't written for your head. Why are you putting shoes on your feet? Well, that's because they were designed for my feet. Exactly. It works when you do as the manufacturer designed it. Hallelujah. Oh, me, oh, my. They are trying to, people are trying to comprehend the Word of God using only their mind. And they're connecting dots. That's information. But it needs to be turned into comprehension, and that's of the head. Connecting dots is information turned into comprehension. That's of the head. But revelation, see, revelation is, comes from the word reveal. See, revelation doesn't mean something didn't exist. It means it was right in front of you the whole time. Well, how come I didn't see it? Because God didn't pull the curtain back. The Wizard of Oz was always in the room. You just didn't see him because he didn't have the curtain pulled back. Once that curtain's pulled back, listen, it's an intuitive knowledge, not a head knowledge. It's something that the heart grasps as truth. That's revelation. Is this too heavy for you today? But revelation is of the spirit. It's in the heart. What happens if you put seeds well, you got your butt sitting on the seat here. What if we put some seeds on the seat? What do you think will happen to them seeds? Well, I put a piece of paper over it. I got it covered. See, we understand things in the natural, but we act like, oh, I don't know when we start talking about the spiritual. Same principles. The Lord talked about that, the, the different types of souls, the wayside, the stony, the thorny, and then the good ground. We're all talking about the heart. Why? Because where do you put seeds? In soil. Yeah. Well, no wonder you're not getting anything out of that tomato seed. You put it on the seat. Or how about concrete? I sowed a bunch of seeds outside. Well, well, did you cultivate and dig? Oh, what, what do you mean? I just put them on my driveway. And they've been there for three months and they ain't done anything. There's some bad seeds. I'm going to return these seeds, get my money back. I got, I got bumfoozled. I got taken advantage of. That's fraudulent. I got my receipt. I'm taking it back. 
Oh, it sounds a whole lot to me like, I ain't going to go out to that church there again. I heard him preach for months. I didn't get a single thing out of it. He don't know what he's talking about. I want my tithing money back. Jesus. <laughs> the one that sold you to the seeds gave you good seed. You just didn't know what to do with it. There's nothing wrong with the seed. It's the soil. There's nothing wrong with the word. It's, it's not nothing wrong with my mouth. It's something wrong with your ears. Planting them seeds in the head and not planting them in the heart. But you see, you got to open yourself up to let them go to the heart, don't you? You can't just sit there and listen. If for it to go to the heart, you've got to receive it in. But a lot of people, that, especially men, we're, we, we want to be tough guys. I don't want to make myself seem vulnerable. Well, you do. You have to humble yourself and open yourself up to the Word of God and receive it in your heart. That means... You ain't all that in a bag of chips at the moment. You've got to be teachable. You've got to be submissive to the word of God. Then you get something out of it. Amen? And if you want it that much, I might as well go there. Why not? Here's another reason why. Because you don't really, you're not, not only not, receiving it in your heart but you're not giving anything to it either if you really plant seed in your heart you know what you'll want to do you'll want to water it yeah. let's go to Malachi 3 there might be a few scriptures today that they don't have in the back so if he's a little slow it's not because he's slow it's because I didn't do my job and I've got some last minute things that the God threw on me and they don't have them 3 8, Malachi 3 8. Will a man rob God? You have robbed me, but you say, Wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Oh. Verse 9. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there what? That there may be what? Food in my house. If you ain't tithing in God's house, you ain't getting no food in God's house. Amen. Like I said, the things of the Spirit have to be received by the Spirit. I don't mean to me. Does the Holy Ghost let him teach you about it? Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. Most people that come out of, a, come out of church, well, I don't get a licking thing out of that place. Go look at their giving. Why did you give today? Oh, I ain't giving nothing out there. That's right. You did not give into God's house, so they're not going to be food for you in God's house. But two rows over, there's somebody about to leap out of their skin when something was said because the Holy Ghost just give them revelation on something they need that's coming down the road two weeks from now, and they already have the answer for it. And before they ever jumped up with joy for the revelation, they made sure they made their way up to the basket. So now there's food in his house for them. Amen, oh me, oh my, hallelujah. Connecting the dots is information, but revelation is of the Spirit. And the Word of God inspires our heart before it can enlighten our head. If you get it wrong, it doesn't go to the head and to the heart. It's got to go into the heart. And then eventually it'll spring forth stuff up and your head will eventually keep, catch up with it. Have you ever had that happen before? I know you have. You've been wanting to go home one way and all of a sudden you just have a check in your spirit. Don't go that road. Go a different one. Well, you know what your head's doing? Well, let's sit down and reason this out. Let's be logical. Now, this road that you always go down on is five miles 
closer and it's also five minutes faster. And so if we go down the road we always go down, we will get home the time that we always get home. And that's very logical to me. You get a check in your spirit and you know what? You obey the spirit. And you might not ever find out why. Because God's talking to your spirit. He's not talking to your head. Your head will get you in trouble every time. Why in the world is he building that boat? For what? Rain, water everywhere. It ain't never rained. He's crazy. Kids, take note. Noah's crazy. Don't be like Noah. <laughs> be productive in life. Do something that's valuable and it's worthwhile. Yeah. Be productive on something that matters. Don't be crazy. Noah's crazy. He might seem crazy to everybody else, but when the rain falls, you want to hook up with somebody. Amen. I said when the rain starts falling, you want to make sure you're hooked up with somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If there's no inspiration, there's not going to be any revelation. Amen. Because when you're open up yourself to receive the word of God, you're hungry. Man, you're on the seat of your pants. Just like kickoff. I know it might divide the room, but roll time. <laughs> you're on the front seat. Yeah, get him, get him, get him. Rammer jammer, come on. When you kind of when you get that attitude in the house of God, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, Pastor. Yeah, I'm eating it. Oh, yeah. Okay. What verse was that? All right. Come on. Come on. How do you know if you're really hungry? Let me ask you something. <laughs> I had a whole message series talked about beef brisket that was out of this world. How many, how many, yeah, I think about it. <laughs> Do y'all think that I only have ever eaten there once? No, no. You would probably, if you were betting people, you'd probably be like, I think pastors ate there more than once. I think pastors drove four hours up to Birmingham just to get some beef brisket. Yeah. I, and somebody next to you, I know he has. I saw the Facebook posts. We got some members here from one way. Your pastor uh, uh, yielded to the suggestion. Now that's where he eats all the time. If you've eaten in Martin's barbecue, raise your hand with him. Amen. Okay. Well, y'all got to get up there. It is so, the brisket is so good that you want to get it again. You know how I learned so much? Because not only did I study what the teacher was teaching. I'd go back and I'd watch what I got revelation out of. I'd go back and I'd watch that same teaching three, four, sometimes five times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I ate that. I'm going my way. Well, you really didn't like it. If it was just, all, if it was the bomb.com, you've already got it on your calendar when you're going back again. And if something hits your spirit that hard, you're going to go back and rewatch it. And every time I do that, I get a little more and I get a little more and I get a little more. Amen? Amen. That's why so many don't. But the Word of God is the only book you'll ever read that reads you. When you're talking about being inspired, talking about opening up, and talking about letting your spirit connect with spirit, that book reads you. You're reading it, but it's reading you. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
And that is why so many people, they don't want anything to do with God's word. It convicts their heart. And so they keep it shut. Why? So they can comfortably keep living in the dark. Because if they open that book, the Word of God is light. And it exposes the hidden places of the heart. Nope, I'm not opening that book. I don't want it to go there. I have my personal belief about that, and that's just the way that I feel. Now, them Bible thumpers down there, down the road, they can believe what they want, but now I'm going to believe what I want. Well, why don't you find out why we believe what we believe? Nope, I ain't going to open that book. Well, you are just, you, you, you just, you just become a hypocrite. Because most people are like, in most other circumstances, they're like, well, you need to see both sides of something to have an understanding. I mean, even in the courtroom, the plaintiff sounds innocent until the defense gets up. I mean, the defense sounds innocent until the plaintiff gets up, right? Because one's throwing totally light on something, one's to do it on another, right? Well, most of y'all will do that right now, too. You ain't going to watch uh, MSDNC, I mean, MSNBC, because you know you're only going to get one narrative of something. And then some, although well, I only want one narrative of this. <laughs> and both of them are missing it some places. But you'll just want to eat whatever they feed you and go about your business. And so most people don't want to get in there. I don't want to know that side. I don't want to know why, God, because they start reading that book and the Holy Ghost is going to start talking to their heart. They don't want to convict it. I don't want to see the light. I want to keep it in the dark. I don't want to look like, you know, I'm a sellout to all my friends and quit doing things I enjoy doing and hanging around people that I enjoy hanging around. Da -da 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 they just want to keep it in the dark. But isn't that hypocritical? But I can even remember, bless her heart, that you need to thank Pastor Kimberly on this. <clears throat> when I got in ministry, I was a licensed and ordained Southern Baptist. <laughs> Had the whole presbytery of all of them from uh, all the pastors from Baldwin County, well, a lot of them, and all in the room, and they drilled me and this and that and the other, and finally come to the conclusion, yeah, he's okay, he's called to the ministry, so... They signed their name, a presbytery, uh, officiating that, that I can be, you know, ordained. And so I was out to prove these crazy tongue talkers are in error. So I was going to write a thesis on it. Come on. I was going to get into the word and let the word decide it. And then Pastor Kimberly, she says, honey, now she's smart. She got wisdom from God on there. Because if she would have been fronting her, oh, yeah, by the way, let me back up. She had received the baptism of the Holy Ghost months earlier at a Joyce Myers conference. Okay. So she's an undercover tongue talker in the house. <laughs> and she wouldn't tell me any of that because she knew exactly what I would have thought about it. Devil, get out of my house. <laughs> and so she said, honey, before you write your report, your thesis, don't you think it would be wise? And I'm not saying that you're wrong, but at least see where the other side's coming from so you'll be more informed so you won't be ignorant of the other side once you present your beautiful paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah that sounds good. That's right. Now, you know, thank you, honey. So I went, and it was 
an absolute 100% of the time, any ministry that I'd ever heard about having signs, wonders, and miracles in their ministry, without a doubt, every single one of them that I checked out, when you went to their beliefs, had baptized in the Holy Spirit, baptism in the Holy Spirit. Every single one of them. I was like, hmm. I was like, well, okay, well, I've done enough of that. Well, let me go back to that one page. They seem to have a bazillion scriptures on why they believe what they believe. I'm sure they took it way out of context. So <laughs> let me go back and check that out and set them straight. All right, this scripture here, all right. Uh, okay, well, let me read above it. Uh, let me read below it. Uh, you know, if I wasn't such a good Baptist boy, I would say that that actually is in context. But it can't be right because I'm a Southern Baptist. So let's go on to the next scripture. Guys, scripture after scripture after, and I'm not talking about one or two. I'm talking about after going about 10 deep. It was undeniable. I had to make a choice. I've either had to follow a denomination that I have been recognized under, that I've got pristines, but I was reverend. Or drop all of it like a bad habit and, and go to the Word and God and say, uh, y'all wrong, and this book ain't. I'm going to follow the book. But see, I had to see both sides. And when I went to the other side, what did God do? He started talking to my what? to my heart because I really wanted to know now it was in the wrong motive at first but I listen I really wanted to know in my heart and that's when he started talking to me in my heart in my spirit man and so so many people don't want to open this book to really 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 know because God will start talking to their heart It'll convict them. I mean, even you got those, you know, sometimes they'll go around, you know, they're the TikTokers or YouTubers and, you know, and they'll go around randomly and ask people about God or Jesus and someone's like, man, I don't want nothing to do with that joker. And they'll be like, well, let me read some scripture to you. It's like, I really don't care. And they will read the word of God to them. And you know what? These people, you know, they seem so hard and just seem so pushed off. And, you know, they're with their friends. and They're like, yeah, that guy's a joke. And, I bet he's some pastor somewhere, and I know we don't want nothing to do with him anyways. What a hypocritical joke. He's dumb as a box of rocks. He don't have any idea, man. He ain't up with the times. He ain't relevant. He don't know. And they seem so big and bold until about maybe 11.30 p.m. at night when they're home alone and their friends ain't with them. And you know what they can't get out of their head? That scripture. And it starts talking to them. The Holy Spirit will start talking to him and talking to him and talking to him. And before you know it, he won't, they won't do it around their friends and their buddies, but they'd be like, come in. Well, hey. Man, you got any more of them scriptures you gave me the other day? Well, I tell you what, I got a whole book full of them. Would you, would you like the book? Maybe. Well, well, I got a Bible over here that, uh, that you can have, or if you want to, we can go down to the store and I can get you. No, nah, we ain't going to go out down to the store together or nothing like that, but I'll take the ones you got in there. Because what Holy Spirit's doing, he's talking to their heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Word of God is the only book you'll ever read that reads you. So that's why, once again, so many people don't want anything to do with God's Word because when they do read it, when they do start applying with them, listen, they're going to be corrected at some point. Nobody likes to be corrected. I'm going to do what I want to do. And that's just what I'm going to do. Well, then they're going totally against God. And God wants them to be on board because it says, how can two walk together unless they agree? 
Because God knows the best thing that ever could happen to you is me. So that's why I'm so rigid about it. Hey, bed. Because that's what pride will do. Pride will keep you from being instructed, from being corrected. Pride will even uh, prevent you from being convicted. Amen? Amen. Amen. So God's word is spirit in life. That's what John 6, 63 says. His words, they are spirit and they are life. Look at your neighbor and say spirit and life. It didn't say that his word is a great curriculum. His word is spirit and his word is life. So if there's no word, guess what? You don't have going on in your life, spirit or life. So what do you have? You have carnality and death. It's amazing to me how serious people get when they finally realize seriousness happens. Like the person, I'm, you know, I'm just going to be honest with you about stuff. I'm in this, listen, I'm in the same boat too, so don't get mad at me. I'm trying to help you anyways. And time after time, whether you read in Scripture, you know, you read that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. It says present your body as a living sacrifice. We have enough information these days to tell us what's good to eat and what's not good to eat. And it's like, you know, we don't care and da-da-da-da until the day we wake up and we're gasping for air. <gasps> and we're sweating and we're thinking we're going to die and fear comes over us. And when somebody rushes us to the emergency room and they're like, brother, you had a mild heart attack. We checked your blood levels. Your cholesterol is off the chain. I mean, it's just unbelievable. And you're about 70 pounds over a desired weight. If you don't do something, you're going to kill yourself. Why does it take a moment like that before somebody will decide, I need to get it together? Same way with the God's Word. Why is it that it takes something, even in the physical like I was just talking about, before we really get serious with God? We walk away so much and just, yeah, whatever. You know, whatever, you know, whatever, whatever okay, you know. As I talked about earlier, you know, even if you are born again, you're abusing God's grace. And just because God's gracious, you know what? Your enemy's not. And what you do might not send you to hell, but what you do can send hell to you. Amen. And you're walking away from the light, and so what you've done is you've just given the enemy access to you. He's, he walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He may devour you now. Yeah. Like scriptures that say, <laughs> those that keep their mind on the Lord will have perfect peace. And you got somebody who's anxious all the time. And you go to their house and they're watching news 24-7. Or they're watching TikTok stuff of people fighting and strife and watching little YouTube clips about Karens. And all they see around their whole life is strife and fight and... In I mean, you know, do you really go, do you really want to go to the race to see somebody go with the checkered line or do you really go in to see a wreck? Do you really want to see a football game with somebody just outskill somebody or do you want to see somebody get their clock cleaned into the next week? <laughs> well, no wonder you're not in perfect peace. And here's what we think. We think that when we bring the spiritual side into that, we think, oh, that's just a bunch of hogwash. It is to the carnal, natural man. 
But spiritually, things are received by the Spirit. And if you'll let the Spirit man come in, God will teach you. That, I mean, science is just now keep it, uh, getting up with it. That when you have a bad attitude in your head, it affects your body. If you have a negative, uh, uh, even the world knows, even, <laughs> even the world will tell you. That if you think low of yourself, it's the law of, they'll say it's like the law of attraction. You'll attract who you are. And if you're still always walking around with your head down, you don't think much about yourself. And, uh, 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 well, no wonder I never have friends. No wonder I never get a promotion. No wonder anything good happens to me. There's reasons, and you don't even see it. And if somebody spiritually tries to tell you, well, you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, He's the lifter of our head. You need to lift your head up. You need to know that you're a child of the Most High God. Saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost. Forever. And they'll be like, ah, come on. I mean, and then they start going to the natural. Look at me. Look at my stature or my age or my, you know, my physical attributes or some, whatever the deal may be. Everybody's different. I mean, shoot, the devil can have a, a five foot six. 102 pound girl and she could eat a burger and then go to the bathroom and throw it up because she thinks she's going to get fat it's like honey you need to eat that cheeseburger but you ain't going to get no sense into them see that's where the devil's got a vice on them it's a spiritual thing and spiritual things can only be broken by the Spirit. Yeah. Not by a prescription. That's why you can keep going and keep padding somebody's pockets. And you're entering behavioral modification, but you know you're not free. How did I know I was free? Hallelujah. I'm not even going to get nowhere near where I wanted to today. How did I know I was free from cigarettes? Because I could be around somebody smoking and, and be like, golly, that stinks. That's nasty. I can't believe I did that. Yeah, these days I, I got to figuring out when I did smoke back in the day, it was like $1.50 a pack or something. It's crazy now. I think Marlboro Lights was a pack. I don't know what is it, five, six dollars or something? Is that right? Or eight or nine now? Okay, we'll see how much I know about that. Crazy. And how listen, how much I just can't seem to get ahead in life. Well, I don't guess so. If you didn't buy a cart in a week, you would have the extra money you needed to get the better car that you needed. You wouldn't have to get the 2004 that's got 180,000 miles on it. You could have got the 2015 that only had 60,000 miles on it. So you would have made it to work that day instead of not making it and getting fired. Stand to your feet as the music plays. I don't know if I'm building a foundation here or digging a hole. So I'm going to quit while I'm here. Amen, amen, that's true. The things of the Spirit are only perceived by your spirit. That's what happens when you immerse yourself. When you immerse yourself, you are allowing the Spirit of God into your heart to talk to you. Don't ever get so closed that you can't hear his voice no more. It's not that he will not stop talking. It's that you can be so much in the flesh and ignore his voice so much for so long that your heart gets calloused and it gets thickened. It's a hardened heart. And now you can't hear when you needed to hear. If you had only heard what he said... What God said back in 2017, you might not be in the physical condition you are now in 2024. 
But you wouldn't listen. You wouldn't open it up. You thought it was silly. As the word says, the natural man thinks it's foolishness. And maybe, maybe the, all the reports say, well, people are not susceptible to that. And then you go research, oh, well, one in a million. And God's trying to talk to you that you're that one. And so he's trying to tell you something. But you can only receive it by your spirit, which means you have to open yourself up. You have to immerse yourself. The cool thing is, is that once you open yourself up, as the Bible says, it's line upon line, precept upon precept. You stay with him long enough in his word long enough and you start having more revelations on so many things in your life and before your life is transformed because he came that you would have life and have it more abundantly why are most Christians see oh, that's just a bunch of baloney I went down to that church and they just broke as I am they own as many medications as I'm on well honey everybody in that church is not immersed themselves. A lot of them are living as casual Christians, carnal Christians, and they never receive and they never build line upon line and precept upon precept. But if you will stay with it long enough, once again, why do we understand it in the natural? Your first day of med school, and they start throwing all of these Latin terms to you, and you're like, I don't have a clue. And you feel so overwhelmed. Well, you're not going to graduate in a week. Why is it that we'll be glad doctors spend eight years in school and then a four more years under the apprenticeship of somebody and appreciate that and understand that? But we won't get into the word of God ourselves and immerse ourselves year after year after year and be under somebody to be tutored. Because if you stay with it as long as that doctor stayed with it, your life would be transformed. And you can receive the things that God has for you. And it's not going to happen overnight. Just like anything great in life, it's delayed gratification. God's a, God is a crock pot and not a microwave. Everything is seed, time, and harvest. It takes a while before it grows. But you immerse yourself, and you'll be able to have the things that God has for you. You'll be able to be, listen, healthy physically, emotionally, mentally you'll have direction for your life and listen especially gentlemen listen you'll have purpose for your life that'll keep you going you'll have strength in your life you'll know what it's like to be victorious you'll know what it's like to overcome the things of the world and more than anything there is nothing better than being in his presence. But you have to immerse yourself.